Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. In this video, we are going to talk about dentinogenesis imperfecta. Now, dentinogenesis imperfecta is an inherent disorder of dentine formation, which is characterized by excessive formation of defective dentine. So, it is a disorder of dentine formation where we have excessive formation of dentine and that dentine is also defective. In amylogenesis imperfecta, there was little or no enamel. But in dentinogenesis imperfecta, we have increased formation of dentine and that dentine is defective. Now, if there is increase in the bulk of dentine, what will happen? It will obliterate the pulp. It will make the pulp smaller. As you can see here, here we have the pulp chamber and as the dentine starts to increase, the pulp chamber will decrease in its size. And this is a characteristic feature of dentinogenesis imperfecta. We have three types of dentinogenesis imperfecta. One, two, three. Type three is the only one where all the features are opposite compared to the type one and type two. The first one is dentinogenesis imperfecta associated with osteogenesis imperfecta. Means in this case, the patient is also having defect in the bone, okay, osteogenesis imperfecta, the bones are going to be very fragile and they can break easily. It is also called as the brittle bone disease. Other features are the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. It will start to become bluish in color. Why? Because there will be thinning of the collagen fibers of the sclera, giving it a blue appearance. So the blue sclera, which is seen in the type 1, of dentinogenesis imperfecta, it is a characteristic feature of, in fact, the osteogenesis imperfecta. In dentinogenesis imperfecta, both the primary as well as the permanent dentition are affected, but we have an exception. In the type 1, the only teeth which is affected is the primary teeth most often, okay? Most commonly affected is the primary teeth for the dentinogenesis imperfecta type 1. Now, type 2 is dentinogenesis imperfecta without osteogenesis imperfecta. So, here we don't have any bone defect. It is also known as hereditary opalescent dentine. Opalescence is a feature of reflecting light. So, in this case, the tooth is opalescent. So, when the tooth will erupt, it will have a opalescent amber-like appearance. So, as the tooth erupts, the color will be amber, which means it will be yellowish in color. But later on in the life of the patient, it will become grayish or yellowish brown and it will continue to become darker and will have a bluish reflection. Now type 3 dentinogenesis imperfecta is the Brady Vine type. Now type 3 as already told is in fact very different from type 1 and type 2 because in this we have little or no dentine. In type 1 and type 2, we had a lot of dentine, right? So, because of that, the pulp became very constricted, very narrow. But in this case, we have little or no dentine. So, what will happen? There will be increased pulp, which is in fact the opposite of what is happening in the type 1 and type 2. So, because of this, when we have little dentine and a large pulp chamber, it will give an appearance of a shell when we see it radiographically. So, that is why it is also known as shell teeth. Type 3 is known as shell teeth. And type 1 and type 2, we had bulb or bell-shaped crown. Here we have a picture of bulb. You can appreciate that the bulb constricts as it goes downward. The same thing happens with such kind of teeth. It appears to be a bulb shape or a tulip shape. Now, enamel in dentinogenesis imperfecta is normal, but enamel is lost early in the life. Why? Because we have a poor bonding between the enamel and the dentine. And also, we have the dentino-enamel junction, which is abnormal. As you can see, this is a dentino-enamel junction, which is a normal one. We have crisscrossing and entangling here, which gives a good bond between the enamel and the dentine. But in dentinogenesis imperfecta, we have a smooth and flattened DEJ. That is why enamel is lost early. Now, when enamel is lost, obviously dentine is very soft, right, compared to enamel. So, there will be severe loss of dentine also. When you clinically examine many of these patients, you will find severe abrasions. Let us conclude. We have three types of dentinogenesis imperfecta. 
type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 and type 2 have a lot of defective dentin formation leading to obliteration of pulp. While type 3 is in fact the opposite where we have less dentine and a bigger pulp chamber leading to a typical appearance of a shell teeth in radiograph. And the bond between enamel and dentine is very weak because DJ is smooth and flattened instead of scalloped. So this was about dentinogenesis imperfecta. I hope you found this video helpful. Please do leave a like and comment as it really motivates me to create more videos of this kind. And if you share my videos, it will help sustain the platform and will help the platform run for a longer period of time. So with this, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Allah Hafiz.